Yaman, 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 yeah, this is Sundiata, the mayor of Kirabu. I'm so, so excited to be in Gulu tonight to celebrate six years of love with Owakabi. Man, the guy has hustled, he has hustled, changing the game in northern Uganda. Respect, respect, respect. And I, be, I believe tonight is going to be a very big night, big performances. I myself am bringing a lot of energy all day from West Nile. It's going to be massive, massive, massive. I'm, I feel so honored to be part of this one here. History in the making. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome my brother, my cousin, my nephew, my favorite comedian. He comes from West Nile. He's been doing a great job right there. He gave me a home in West Nile, and he's a champion. Comes all the way from my second home, Kirabu. Kulu, make welcome to one and only Sundiata! At the end of this year, I will celebrate one gentleman who added a lot to the comedy industry in Uganda. Recently, we lost Kadolo Boama. Of my performance time, I want us to observe one minute of silence to celebrate his life. Just one minute. And uh, in that same one minute, you can use it to fear women, eh? Fear women, okay? <laughs> man! I fear women, man! You see, I don't like extravagant girls. I don't like extravagant girls, ladies and gentlemen. You see, that's why I fear women. My babe told me, Sundiata, take me for a date. So, I was a senior six vacist. I took her for a date in a posh restaurant in Kampala that sells local food. As a student, I had 48k, 48k. We reached there. My girlfriend ordered for food of 35k. Ah! 35k. It was okay. I bought for love. She shocked me. She decided to buy takeaway. 4k. Ah! 4k salads. Then there was silver plate. 1k. 40k. Sweet! Like that. I was like, ah! What am I going to order now? Now, guys, I ordered porridge. Porridge in that restaurant was 8K. That was the only thing I could afford. The waiter was like, sir, what could we offer you? I was like, give me porridge. He was like, okay, porridge here is 8K. But however, we also have porridge with milk. Porridge with milk is 15K. I guess you want porridge with milk. I said, who told you? I don't like milk at all. Me and milk, we don't cross at all. Now, what pained me? There was no transport money. I said, I'm going to foot with this girl. Babe, I footed with that girl. Eh? She kept on asking me, baby, where are we boarding? I kept on giving her hope. I was like, ah, we shall just board at the other corner there. Let's go, let's go. Just two minutes, we shall board. We went. She was like, baby, where are we boarding? I said, this area here. You see these border borders? They are very dangerous. Eh? Last week, they killed my friend here. Let us keep on walking. Bro, do you know that walking where you walk, you foot, you foot with someone until you get tired. Your soul leaves you, jumps on a border border and goes away. <laughs> Me, I wanted us to just reach home. She heads to the toilet and shits my money. How can you order food as if you're on weed? Eh? By the way, people look at me and they think I smoke weed. Eh? I don't blame them. Even sometimes when I look at myself, I'm like, ah, you man, don't you smoke weed? <laughs> But I had friends who smoke weed. Eh? It is because of them that I realized I come from Arua, and in Arua we have two types of weed. We have weed called weed from San Siro. Now, San Siro is a place like, uh, you have a place in Korea called Konjuat? Konjupal? That place there where there are wrong guys, pickpocketers, what? Now, San Siro is like that place here. Now, in San Siro, if you smoke weed from San Siro, it makes your finger, your hands start eating, eh? Your hands start eating. You feel like grabbing someone's phone, eh? Something like that, eh? Now, you find someone smokes San Siro weed from nowhere, he's grabbing a fridge, coming with it. <laughs> and he even wonders, how did I carry this thing here? That's San Siro weed. Now, in Arua, we also have a weed called Hope Kebir. Weed, Hope Kebir. Now, Kebir is an Arabic word for big. When you smoke Hope Kebir, it makes you very ambitious. You feel you are the one. You have hope. I have a friend called Aluma. 
I was with him. Aluma smoked hope kebiri. He smoked the fast, fast path. Sir, 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 sir. Smoke the second one. Hope Kebir has instant impact. Instant impact, bro. Immediately he smoked Hope Kebir. His speech changed. From nowhere he told me, Sundiata. I said, yes. He said, Sundiata, I have a message for the president. I was like, what do you mean you have a message for the president? He said, no, Sundiata, I have something I want to tell the president. Members, that thing is very aggressive. From nowhere, from nowhere. Aluma started running towards the presidential lodge. Ah, I started running after my friend. I was like, ah, I know the people who protect the president, the SFC, huge guys. You see their chest, they may think they have two bags of cement here. Huge guys. Aluma was flying. I was running after him. We reached the gate. One Afande just said, Where were you in the happy? Go, Manyoko, Senji. Where are you guys going? Stupid friend of mine, Aluma said, I have a message for the president. I don't know where the hand came from. I don't know. There was a hand this size. The hand was just flying. They slapped him. Bro, do you know that slap where they slap someone, but it is you that feels the pain? That slap there. They slapped Aluma. Aluma started saying some things in my language. Look, Bara. He wrote money panga die. I could in the basa panga see. Meaning, Sunyata, hold for me that panga. This man is slapping people using panga. Hold for me. You see, they slapped him. It formatted his brain. The Afande's hand remained here. Now, Afande gave him a slap called the reverse slap. This one here. They slapped him. Bah! He came back to his senses. He started asking questions. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? Eh? They slapped him again. Bah! Do you still have a message for the president? Aluma started explaining government policies. You see, the parish development model, under the parish development model, we have the Emioga. Then we have NUSAF, we have NADS. I'm supposed to write to my LC1 chairman, LC1 will write to the RDC, then I will maybe reach the president. Now, Dafadet slapped him and turned to me and said, and you, do you also have a message for the president? I said, ah, my message is for the MP. <laughs> where is Abiriga, where is Abiriga? I thought it was like, you're stupid. Abiriga is dead. Why are you looking for a dead man here? I was like, hey, he's dead, eh? I didn't know. When did he die? Like, I will slap you. <laughs> now, I was very stupid to answer. And I found it. It was, you know, see, if you leave this place today, and you meet a soldier outside there, when they ask you, where are you from? Never, never answer, and I found it. Oh, you be a soldier. Don't answer them. Leave him to assume where you're coming from. He'll ask you questions, of course. Are you from the club? Keep quiet. Are you from the church? Maybe you can accept that because that is a good thing. Now, my stupid, stupid me, they asked me a question. Do you have a message for the president? I said I was looking for the, I, I can't see the MP, Abiriga. That thing reminded me one time, my mother told me, Sundiata, Sundiata, your mouth will put you in trouble. But she did not tell me the venue. Ah. Do you know frog jump? Ah, yeah, yeah, we did frog jump. Like from here, we were in Peche, jumping, jumping, jumping. By the time he got home, my friend Aluma's cheek was swollen here. Guys asked him, Aluma, what happened here? He was like, ah, oh, man, those guys are animals. Eh? Those are animals. Al-Shabaab. That's why I don't treasure being a soldier. I'll never treasure to be a soldier. My childhood dream was to become a zoologist, actually. I wanted to become a zoologist working with animals. You could think maybe I treasured being a comedian. No, 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 no. I never wanted to become a comedian. No. This is what I realized, bro. You see, in this country of ours, Uganda here, the cameraman is there, see him, ask him. These were the leaders of tomorrow. Now they are the cameramen of today, they are here. See them. You see, if you go abroad, a kid will tell the mother, mommy, for me, I want to become a neurosurgeon. This kid will grow up and become a neurosurgeon. Why? These guys have systems. They have systems in place. To blow your mind, if you look at the schools abroad, Europe, America, they have what they call the school day. School day, oh, before even I reach there, by the way, abroad, whatever you want to become in future, like you, you will become it. For example, if you want to become a secretary, there is the University of Secretarial Services in Philadelphia. You will become a secretary, by the way. If you want to become a grave digger, there is the School of Excavation in Manchester. You will become that thing there. 
Now, these guys have school day. In school day, a parent who is a doctor comes and talks to kids who want to become doctors. Eh? He talks to them to inspire them. Now, here, we also have school day. I went to a secondary school called uh, In God's Hand Preparatory Secondary School, In God's Hand. Now, during our school days, our parents that come there, first of all, they don't know what they're doing in life. They don't know. And they come for the school day to receive advice on how to make it in life. Eh? You see these things here? And then I blame it on our education system, why this country is very hard. We study a lot of nonsense. You remember Majimaji Rebellion? They teach you the Majimaji Rebellion. But in real life, you cannot afford a bottle of water. This is Uganda. I blame it on our education system. Now, things are hard. You cannot save it. You cannot save money. Your money will come and save you. I know how saving works in Uganda. Here, yeah, I know how saving works. Saving is very difficult in this country here. Yeah. For the past four months, I've been trying to save one million, just one million. Four months. You save, like our saving, you save. Once you reach 500k, you get a problem of 700k. Yeah. Eh? Now, you have to go and borrow to solve the problem. Eh? Saving is hard in this country. Now, when you go and borrow, my sister, what happens? You are forced to get yourself into what they call the borrowing circle. What is the borrowing circle? You borrow from Okelo. You go and borrow from Alex to pay Okelo. Okay? Now, you go and borrow from Paul. Before you reach Paul, you are already in very good books of Okelo, by the way. Now, you come back and borrow from Okelo. Eh? Now, by the time you reach Okelo, Okelo okay, can't even praise you to people that soon. That is very good. He borrows, he pays people in time. What? He praises you. The borrowing circle. Problems keep on coming. Coming. You get tired at some point, even feel people. Like you feel somebody should die somewhere for you to be like bailed out. Now, time comes when they are demanding you left, right, and center. The circle is demanding you. M10 more cash is demanding you. Yeah, Airtel, Webole is demanding you. Time comes, somebody wants to send you your own money. Your money, but you refuse. Don't send it. Don't put it on MT. No, don't send it. I don't want. Come on, why are you sending me the money? I don't want. Is it your money? Leave. Don't send it. I don't want. Eh? Man, but let me tell you something. Brokenness is very bad. Eh? I have suffered in the hands of brokenness. Brokenness is very bad. See, whenever I'm broke, brokenness takes me through three phases. One, it makes me an analyst. I become an analyst whenever I'm broke. I start analyzing my decisions. I analyze my expenses. I can be like, ah, but why did I eat lunch yesterday? Why did I eat lunch? <laughs> Jesus fasted for 40 days and I'm a Muslim. I'm and serious. Fasting just for one day. Now, brokenness will make you also have excuses for every stupid decision you're going to make. My brother was very broke. He had 5K and the 5K was for buying electricity unit, the Yaka. He ate the money, he ate it. Then he told me, bro, you know what? After all, it is not very dark. Let's eat this money here. We shall not die. Our bed is here, we can locate it. The food is here, I can pick it and put it in my mouth. Progress is bad. Now, the worst thing you should pray against is when you are broke and you are hungry at the same time. It is very dangerous. One time I was very broke, I was hungry, I went to get my, my transcript at Makerere. Now you know Makerere has this bad, they call the calorie. Calorie, you know calorie? That bad there. Man, I was broke, hungry, then I looked at this bird like this. I was like, ah, this thing here, if I deep fry it, <laughs> then throw some tomatoes, it can kill food, eh? Dangerous, man. So I did my show in Arua, I got some small money, I told myself, ah, Suliata, yours and brokenness is done, you'll never be broke again. But this is when I realized mine and brokenness is not a situation, it is a relationship. I don't know if you have realized for me, every time I get money, that is when my friends start getting problem. I get money like this, they start calling me. Like, the whole of this year, I've been getting money every month. People from Arua call me. Hey, Sundiata, your grandmother is sick. Send some money for Antenantol. Hey, Antenantol? <laughs> Who misses her period at 87 years? Who? My grandfather is dead. Why are you missing your period? <laughs> These days, for me, when I get money, I pray for people first. I pray. Now, my friends who are here, they are going to pay me after this show. Don't tell me your problems. I've prayed for you. Let's respect each other. This is my last set, and it is, the, it is, an, it is an advice to all the men in the house here. Please, men, take care of yourselves. Not, no, not, not, not fearing women. Go and test for prostate cancer. It is very important. 
it is very important. When I was at the university, a team from Uganda Cancer Institute came through and said, you guys, you know what? By the time you clock 40 years old, your chances of contracting prostate cancer is 80%. Please. If you're 40 years, it is very possible that you're going to get prostate cancer. But you guys who are below 40, you are not exceptional. It can even attack you guys and you die. Now, they were like, the government is running a free prostate cancer screening at Bombo Military Hospital. Bombo Military Hospital. I said, health is wealth. I jumped in a taxi, went to Bombo Military Hospital. I met a guy there, I told him why I was there. He told me, Sundiata, what we have to do for you is we have to conduct for you a sigmodoscopy. Sigmodoscopy. Bro, you know sigmodoscopy? Even me, I didn't know then. So he told me, sigmodoscopy is the process through which we see the inside area of the large intestine nearest to the rectum. Rectum. Bro, you know rectum? You know rectum? Now you're about to know rectum. You have pen and paper. He told me, Sundiata, I was like, what is rectum? He told, he told me, rectum is the exit. Rectum is the exit. So, sigmodoscopy in a layman's term is the process through which we enter via the exit using these two fingers. We enter via the exit to check the extent of enlargement of the prostate. I was like, so sir, what are you going to do? He told me, Sundiata, you see that room there? You go in that room there and press and come here. I went there and dressed and I came. Look at this body here and naked. Just look at this body, see. I was naked. Then the guy told me, Sundiata, you bend down. Naked. I bend down. I was like, but I bend down and you do what? He said, Sundiata, you see, with sigmodoscopy, you have to enter through the exit and see the extent of enlargement of the prostate. Members, I bend down. I was like, ah, not like this. Make for me a curve. Make for me a curve. Eh? I want to have a direct entry. I'm like, direct entry to where? Man, this guy started telling me things that I tell ladies. As soon as I open your legs. I'm like, ah! I open my legs and you do what? No! It is not my sister. It was not as if I was like a coward. The man is a military doctor. His hands were like big, like this microphone, this microphone. You want to go where? Because like Sundiata, don't waste my time. I have patience. Members, I was a coward, eh? but I don't know how I ended up being the one saying being said by ladies. I was there, and I was like, okay, let's do it, but please, first switch off the light. Okay, first switch off the light. I was like, Sundiata, I cannot switch off the light. I need to see where I'm going. I was like, okay, it is my first time, but take me slowly, okay? Take me slowly. Man, he did his sigmodoscopy. I was like, ah, are you in? I was like, ah, your hands are very big, eh? I was like, yeah, people tell me that, people tell me that, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I could feel some fluids coming. I, I am very sure these were the prostate from the prostate gland, eh? I could feel fluids coming. I was like, ah, doctor, I think I'm coming. <laughs> but the thing was very sweet. I was like, ah, can we do another round? <laughs> My name is Sundia Tadamayo Kiyavu! Last one.